So investment properties, you know, number one, an investment is an investment of something. It has to make sense, right? You invest your money, your time, your resources, and there's only so much that anybody has of all of it. So uh, any investment deal has to make sense, you know, from whatever it is you're putting into it, whether it be your time or money. Yeah, and um, investing in real estate is one of those things that we've always said for years, you make your investment when you purchase it. Like you're, you knowing your numbers, knowing what time, energy, money, efforts, whatever you're gonna put into it, you've gotta know what that looks like on the front end. And the worst investment decision you can make is say, oh, I'll make that up on the back end. It never, it never happens that way. So, right. Yeah, you can't base your numbers on that. Yeah. Now, right. it's nice when it happens, but yeah. you can't, but you got to assume that it's going to stay level. And for rental houses, for instance, or commercial rental property, you're going to make your money on the cap rate, on the return. People you know? don't know what cap rate means. You're going to have to go ahead and just give just, that, this, that definition. You're going into... In the finance and field, finance people, yeah, people don't know what that means. So tell them what a cap rate is. What's your re return percentage? You know, if you put ten dollars down on something, uh, if you have a cap rate of six, you're going to make sixty cents. I mean, that's a terribly small. If you put down a million dollars on something, then you're going to be making sixty thousand dollars. At a six percent cap rate. At a six percent cap. So rate. what do most investors want to see cap rate wise? Like a like a yeah, I know you've got like your home run. And, but then you've got like, this makes sense, so I could do it, but any lower than that doesn't. Well, it, it varies, but the, the safest investment for a brand new building or with no maintenance, no issues, and a really good long-term tenant, you may see cap rates at four or five, uh, or a lot lower. Uh, or, but they're banking on that, not having all the extra overhead that you would have with an old building. They're banking on just parking their money there and not doing anything at all with safe. it. It's safe. safe. It's a safe investment. Uh, Somebody who's really wanting to make a little bit more risky investment, you know, maybe it's a more short, short term, you know, what does that right. look like? So, you know, a good number would be 10%, a 10 cap. If you could get 10% on, on an investment deal, that's, that's good. That's doing good. Okay. So let's take it back to something really simple. Like, um, let's, you know, we've got big investors, we've got small investors. Let's talk, let's, let's assume we're talking to people today who want to get into investing real estate. I get that all the time. Like, how do we start? Right. How do we how do we make this happen? And I think right now there are opportunities for those people um, in different ways. I know we've talked about um, we had somebody ask this week actually about a HELOC on their personal house to buy an investment property, which I think we need to talk about that. But we've also talked about people um, having low interest rates on the current homes that they're in. Um, you know, so I think there's opportunity there. So so sure. let's talk about the whole HELOC idea. First off, a HELOC is just a is just a second loan on your house. Home right? equity line of credit. There you go. So if your house is worth five hundred thousand and your mortgage is worth three hundred thousand, you have a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage. That means you got two hundred thousand dollars equity in that house uh, that you have access to. Now a bank may lend eighty percent of that, so that would be uh, one hundred sixty thousand dollars HELOC opportunity that you could use. And now you're not paying any interest on that or doing anything with that until you actually use it. Right. So uh, the first step you know, in investment property is to learn as much as you can, but then be ready for when the opportunity hits. Right, that's where I find that people miss out on opportunities, especially if, you, if you're wanting to get into, like I want to get into best investing in real estate. And the best time to start investing in real estate, if you want to get into that, was, was last year. So like, you've got to start now. The best time uh, to buy real estate was two years ago. Yeah, was every single year. Every yeah. year. I mean, and I'll say that next year and the next year and the next year. Um, so the thing is, is it's like you said, when the deal pops up, if you're not ready, somebody else is and you will miss it. So you do have to do your homework. You do have to figure out what you can afford, what you feel comfortable affording. And then you've got to learn what you're looking for from a number standpoint. So I think that is a big, that's probably the number one thing is, is learning about it and being ready when the deal presents itself. Right. So if you have $150,000 in cash or you have $150,000 in a line of credit available and that's what you feel comfortable with putting down, then we can back out those numbers and say, okay, you're looking for a, a such and such investment that's gonna return so much. And it depends on how much time you wanna put into it, uh, how much risk you're willing to put into it. Uh, if you were to buy rental houses, for instance, or a duplex and find one that is in terrible condition, uh, that's not going, be the safest investment, but if you're the kind of guy to go in and fix it up and, and work with some different things, you could have some then great equity. You could have some sweat equity in there and help build that, you know, and that's right. where 
uh, people who are hands-on can really you know gain some wealth there. Well, I think you just made another good point of like different things to invest in, whether it's in rental homes, whether it's in you know duplexes or whatnot. I know that Nashville has been really big with like in the Airbnb market, you know, and that's a really sexy investment, especially mm -hmm. for my millennial friends. I own Airbnbs, you know, and yes, they can make a lot of money. Yes, they can be good investments. There's a lot of risk with those in different ways because of zoning and this, that, and the other. So uh, getting your emotions involved with what you're investing in it is not what needs to be guiding you. It's really more making that what you said the smart investment the, the investment that's either it's safety or it's return on investment and so i know a lot of people like and diversifying we've got some people that all they want is airbnbs and that's that's great but what happens to the airbnb market slumps like crashes. it did crashes yeah. like it did you know several years was it three or four years ago and then you don't have any long-term rentals or duplexes or anything of that nature to offset your airbnbs that aren't renting or you're having to put you know long-term tenants into your Airbnbs to carry them or whatnot. And we saw that happen. So yes, a rental house that needs a little work is not super sexy, but guess what? That money in your bank, you can buy whatever you want with it. Buy the sexiest car, mm -hmm. the sexiest purse, the sexiest jewelry. Sometimes the most boring investments are the best investments. Right, and I think it, yeah. to your point, go with what where the numbers make sense. Yeah. And not it's gonna make sense regardless of what it is.